Good day and welcome to Wine Week. I'm Danny. And I'm Brad. And you're kicking yourself on this grand final episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an exciting week in Melbourne town this week, so good luck to both teams competing. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to kick off with a, a wine that is regularly on my quaffing list. Almost on a fortnightly basis, I will pick up a bottle of this wine, and it's the Jim Barry Riesling. And very good reason. It comes down to quality and price here are almost unmatched. Now look, we've talked about it a lot in the last couple of years about how with Rieslings you're getting really good value. Here is a case in point. This one regularly around the traps, around the sort of $14, $15 mark, occasionally it dips down below that. At $15, even at $20, this is a great Riesling. It is fresh, crisp, lively. It's everything you want in a white wine, especially with the warmer weather approaching. But for that price, it just can't be beaten. So it's the Jim Barry uh, Riesling. Get out and grab a bottle. Yeah, look, next one we're going to have a look at. If we're talking about big weekends of football, we're often talking a little bit about junk food, <laughs> and which kind of is an interesting story behind the current one we're going to have a look at, the Torbrecht Juveniles. Now, five odd years ago, Dave Powell, who we all know as the winemaker at Torbrecht, sold off Torbrecht to the owner of the Hungry Jacks, which to the Americans out there is kind of the Australian version of Burger King, sold it off to the, you know, the head of the Hungry Jacks chain. Five years later, after the divorce settlement all settled down, Dave Powell has bought the company back. So not only is he the chief winemaker now, he's the chief cook, bottle washer, and you know, owner of the place again, which is great because look, he's been producing wines that are just world famous. Now, this is kind of the starting point of the, uh, the Torbrecht range. This is an unoaked wine uh, that is perfect. If you're putting it together, say, with like you know, uh, mini pizzas on the weekend, this would be fantastic. It's kind of mid-20s, so it's not the cheapest thing out there, but it's just a stunning wine that really is you know, a great entry point to you know, just taking on the tall brick range. And if you've got $200 to spend, there's stuff that Dave Powell can send you. So have a look at this one. Yeah, it really is a good entry into the Torbrecht range and, uh, and won't break the bank. No. I'm going to finish with a wine that also won't break the bank and is another really good quaffing wine. This is the Hardy's Umu GSM blend, the Grenache Shiraz uh, Mavurdra. And again, the Hardy's Umu range are all about quality for the price. So here again, you're looking at a wine that's regularly around the traps of the sort of the mid-teens and sometimes dips below that. Uh, it's a very easy drink drink now style of wine. This is one that you wouldn't really probably put down in the cellar for a few years. It's more you go out, grab a bottle the night you're going to drink it and crack it open with a few mates and see how it goes. It's quite a, a rich style but again it's not too sweet which is the criticism of some of the sort of cheaper quaffing uh, wines. They go a bit over top and try to compensate with this sticky sweetness but uh, the Hardy Zumu GSM blend uh, really hits the nail on the head and for the price look really can't be beaten so it's really worth a look. Yeah it certainly is yeah just over ten dollars that is an absolute cracker anyhow that's it for this week on wine week may the best team win on the weekend i know who i'll be barracking for <laughs> yeah so do i <laughs> anyhow we'll talk about that next week see you next week